Good afternoon. This is All India Radio. I am Varsha Williams and with me is Ramya with the Midday News. The headlines. Charanjit Singh Channi sworn in as new Chief Minister of Punjab. Prime Minister congratulates him and says centre will continue to work with the Punjab government for the betterment of the people. Foreign Minister of Saudi Arabia, Prince Faisal bin Farhan Al Saud to call on Prime Minister Narendra Modi today. National COVID-19 vaccination crosses 81 crore mark. Recovery rate stands at 97.68%. Schools reopen in several states amid COVID protocol. Vladimir Putin's United Russia Party retains majority in parliamentary polls. Union Minister Anurag Thakur to discuss promotion of sports in the country with sports ministers of states and union territories. In IPL cricket, Kolkata Knight Riders to take on Royal Challengers Bangalore at Abu Dhabi at 7.30 p.m. As the nationwide free COVID-19 vaccination campaign at government facilities for those above 18 years is underway, we advise our young listeners to get vaccinated and also help others get vaccinated. We also advise our listeners not to lower their guard as COVID-19 remains a threat to our health. Please stay at home unless it is essential to go out and continue to follow these three simple steps. Wear a face mask, maintain dogas ki duri for social distancing, focus on hand and face hygiene. For any COVID-related information and guidance, contact National Helpline numbers 011-2397-8046 and 1075. And other news in detail. The new Chief Minister of Punjab, Charanjit Singh Channi, was sworn in today at Raj Bhavan in Chandigarh. He became the 16th Chief Minister of the state. Governor Banwari Lal Purohit administered him the oath of office and secrecy. Along with him, two senior MLAs, Sukhjinder Singh Randhava and O.P. Soni, also took oath as cabinet ministers. They will be the deputy chief ministers in the government. Mr. Soni is a member of the Legislative Assembly from Amritsar Central, while Mr. Randhava is an MLA from Dera Baba Nanak. At the last minute, the name of Brahma Mohindra was replaced by O.P. Soni. There were reports that senior Congress leader Brahma Mohindra refused to accept the post of Deputy Chief Minister. Congress leader Rahul Gandhi, State Congress President Navjot Singh Sidhu, Assembly Speaker Rana K.P. Singh, Rajya Sabha member Ambika Soni were also present on the occasion. Former Chief Minister Captain Amrinder Singh did not attend the ceremony. Mr. Channi replaced Captain Amrinder Singh, who had resigned from the post of Chief Minister on Saturday after being allegedly humiliated by the party. Prime Minister Narendra Modi said the centre will continue to work with the Punjab government for the betterment of the people of the state. In a message, Mr. Modi congratulated Charanjit Singh Channi on being sworn in as Punjab Chief Minister. Foreign Minister of Saudi Arabia, Prince Faisal bin Farhan Al Saud, will call on Prime Minister Narendra Modi today. The meeting will take place at the Prime Minister's residence in New Delhi. Yesterday, External Affairs Minister Dr. S. J. Shankar met the visiting Foreign Minister of Saudi Arabia. This was the first ministerial visit from Saudi Arabia to India since the outbreak of the COVID pandemic. Both ministers discussed all issues related to their bilateral relationship and regional and international issues of mutual interest. The two ministers reviewed the implementation of the Strategic Partnership Council Agreement signed between the two sides during the visit of Prime Minister Narendra Modi to Saudi Arabia in October 2019. They also expressed satisfaction at the meetings held under the agreement and progress achieved. Both sides discussed further steps to strengthen their partnership in trade, investment, energy, defense, security, culture, consular issues, healthcare and human resources. India has crossed yet another milestone in the COVID vaccination drive with the total vaccination crossing the 81 crore mark today. Union Health Ministry has termed it as yet another achievement in its fight against COVID-19. Over 30,000 new COVID-19 cases were reported while around 39,000 people recovered in the last 24 hours, 295 people lost their lives during the period. The Union Health Ministry said the COVID recovery rate in the country now stands at 97.68%. 
बीजेपी प्रेसिडेंट जे पी नड्डा टूडे एक्सप्रेस हैप्पीनेस दैट अ लार्ज नंबर ऑफ कोविड वैक्सीनेशन हैव बीन डन विद इन अ स्मॉल स्पैन ऑफ टाइम टॉकिंग टू रिपोर्टर्स आफ्टर विजिटिंग अ वैक्सीनेशन सेंटर एट एम्स इन न्यू डेली मिस्टर नड्डा सेड एवरी वन हैज कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटेड टू द वैक्सीनेशन प्रोग्राम दैट हैज प्रूवन टू बी द फास्टेस्ट एंड द लार्जेस्ट ड्राइव इन द वर्ल्ड He said on the birthday of Prime Minister Narendra Modi India broke record and over 2 crore 50 lakh people got vaccinated Aaj hum ye keh sakte hain is vaccination karyakram ne ye siddh kar diya hai ki ye duniya ka fastest teevr gati se chalne wala aur sabse bada karyakram hai bahut kam avdhi mein 84 crore se zyada vaccination ka karyakram pura hua hai 2.5 crore se zyada logon ne vaccination mein apna yogdan kiya The union government today said that more than 79 crore 58 lakh covid vaccine doses have been provided to states and union territories so far the health ministry said that more than 5 crore 43 lakh unutilized vaccine doses are still available with the states union territories and private hospitals to be administered the ministry said more than 15 lakh doses are in the pipeline In Rajasthan classes from 6th to 8th standard have reopened across the state after 5 months with 50% capacity complete covid vaccination has been made mandatory for all the teachers of the schools children are advised to bring food and water from home more from our correspondent new guidelines of covid have been implemented in the state from today under these the schools from 6 to 8th standard have been opened for students schools from 1st to 5th will be opened from 27 september buses autos and cabs have also started to ferry students and school staff students are also required to take written permission from their parents to attend classes now 200 people are allowed to attend the wedding ceremony and other events yoga center gyms animal heart fairs and swimming pools have also started in the state night curfew will continue in the entire state from 11 pm to 5 pm jitendra divedi air news jaipur all government and private schools above class 6th will open from today in jharkhand earlier the state government had given permission to open schools and colleges for students from classes 9th to 12th details from our correspondent All government private and government aided schools in Jharkhand above class 6 have been given permission by the state government to conduct offline classes from today onwards students of class 6 and above shall now attend offline classes in the school premises after permission was issued by the state disaster management authority in a recent meeting with just 56 active covid-19 cases undergoing treatment in the state permission to open all schools above class 6 was given by the state government at present the government has allowed schools to conduct classes daily for only 4 hours in a day schools have been asked to follow covid-19 guidelines while vaccination of all school staff has been made mandatory shilpi air news ranchi in madhya pradesh all government and private schools from classes 1st to 5th have reopened today more from our bhopal correspondent after about 18 months on september 20th for the first time children of classes 1st to 5th will find their way to school Sanitization work is being done along with the cleanliness of the school before they begin. With the opening of the school, classes will be conducted in primary schools with 50% capacity. The written consent of parents will be mandatory in schools. Meanwhile, the third phase of the COVID vaccination mahabhiyan is going on full swing in the state. A target has been set to finish the first dose of vaccine to every eligible person in the state by September 26. Rashid Ahmed Khan, All India Radio News, Bhopal. In Assam classes for 10th standard students resumed today following all covid protocols the Assam government recently decided to resume physical classes for nearly 4 lakh 10th standard students the students have come to schools after nearly 4 and a half months prior to reopening of classes sanitization of classrooms was done earlier on the 6th of this month physical classes for the 12th standard and degree course final year resumed after a gap of 4 months The decision of resuming the rest of physical classes would be taken later depending upon the covid situation in the state.
Health Minister Mansukh Mandavia has called upon All India Institute of Medical Sciences to coordinate with each other so that government can provide the best health care to the public. Mr. Mandavia today held a review meeting in New Delhi with six AIMS hospitals across the country. Our correspondent reports that the discussion also centered around the construction of modern infrastructure in different wings of the hospital. In Madhya Pradesh, the state government is organizing a public welfare and Suraj campaign from 17th September to 7th October on the occasion of the birthday of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. During this 20-day special campaign, various steps are being taken for the betterment of the life of the common people. More from our correspondent. Chief Minister Shivraj Singh Chauhan will inaugurate the buildings of 103 newly constructed Anganwadi centers in 32 districts and 10,000 nutrition gardens in 52 districts of the state tomorrow. The Chief Minister will also provide nutrition rights information sheets to mother of 10,000 children who have been come to normal nutrition level after the severe malnutrition in 22 districts. Sri Chauhan will distribute maternity assistance amounting to rupees 5 crore to 25,000 pregnant and lactating mothers under the Pradhan Mantri Matra Vandana Yojana. Sri Chauhan will also distribute a scholarship amounting to rupees 21 crore to more than 75,000 students of the class 6, 9th, 11th and 12th under Largely Lakshmi Yojana. Meanwhile, more than 84,000 Anganwadi centers and, and around 12,000 mini Anganwadi centers are operating in the state. Similarly, under Poshan Abhiyan, about 42,000 nutrition gardens have been constructed in the state so far. Sanjeev Sharma, AIR News, Bhopal. As part of Seva or Samarpan campaign, Ladakh Member of Parliament Jamyang Tering Namgyal spent three days in various army posts in Changthang of eastern Ladakh region to celebrate the 71st birthday of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. He visited Kailash OP post, Tagyar Mela post and Demjok Pu till Tea Point near Charding Nilung Junction. At Kerala Shopi Post, Namgyal unfurled the national flag, offered Rivo Sang Chor Puja and hoisted traditional prayer flags and celebrated the 71st birthday of PM Narendra Modi. Army officers briefed about the border situation and preparedness of the Indian Army and ITBP officers. Mr. Jamyang also inaugurated free medical camp organized by ITBP for the people of Demchok and participated in Swachh Demchok Abhiyan organized by ITBP during the visit. He laid the foundation stone for a 14 crore rupee worth motorable bridge construction project at Dungti in Changthang. In the program Spotlight, News Services Division of All India Radio is broadcasting a special series, Seva or Samarpan, B. Sal Sushasan Ke. Today, the theme is Ek Bharat, Shresht Bharat. It showcases the resolve and dedication of Prime Minister Narendra Modi to strengthen the unity and integrity of India. This special program can be heard tonight on FM Gold Channel and additional frequencies from 9.15 p.m. onwards. This program will also be available on our website, newsonair.com, and on our YouTube channel, News on AIR Official. Raising awareness about coronavirus and Corona Jagrukta series from 9.30 to 10 p.m. Today we have Dr. Sanjeev Kumar from Ames, Patna, responding to queries of the listeners. So keep listening to All India Radio News for the latest developments. You are listening to the Midday News on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Charanjit Singh Channi sworn in as the new Chief Minister of Punjab. Prime Minister congratulates and says Centre will continue to work with the Punjab government for the betterment of the people. Foreign Minister of Saudi Arabia, Prince Faisal bin Farhan Al Saud, to call on Prime Minister Narendra Modi today. National COVID-19 vaccination crosses 81 crore mark. Recovery rate stands at 97.68%. Schools reopen in several states amid COVID protocol. Vladimir Putin's United Russia Party retains majority in parliamentary polls. Union Minister Anurag Thakur to discuss promotion of sports in the country with sports ministers of states and union territories. In IPL cricket, Kolkata Knight Riders to take on Royal Challengers Bangalore at Abu Dhabi at 7.30 p.m. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on Twitter handle at the rate AIR News Alerts.
Welcome back to the Midday News. The income of farmers has witnessed 59% surge in 2019. This was revealed in a situation assessment survey of agricultural households, land and livestock holdings of households of rural India, 2019. The survey was conducted from January to December 2019. In an interview to an English daily, Union Agriculture Secretary Sanjay Agrawal said, The objective of this survey is to get a comprehensive idea about the income situation of an agricultural household. He said the survey also showed that farmers' incomes adjusted for inflation have risen by about 2%. Mr. Agarwal said a total of 1,58,000 crore rupees has been released so far to more than 11 crore farmers' families through direct transfer into their bank accounts under the PM Kisan scheme. CSIR National Aerospace Laboratories in Bengaluru is the only government aerospace research and development laboratory in the country's civilian sector. CSIR NAL is a high-technology-oriented institution focusing on advanced disciplines in aerospace. More from our correspondent. CSIR NAL has provided significant value-added inputs in all the Indian National Aerospace Program. It has developed many critical technologies for the strategic sector and continues to support the mission mode programs of the country under Atmanirbhar Yojana. The Director of National Aerospace Laboratories, Mr. Jitendra J. Jadhav, spoke exclusively to AIR News on their initiative to build civilian aircraft within the country. Currently, NL has taken up the development of advanced versions of Hansa Next Generation Two-Seater Flying Training, which has got a glass cockpit and digital control engine. NL has further taken up the development of 19-seater commuter transport aircraft Saras Mark II to connect Tire II and Tire III cities under Udan scheme. CSIR NAL's mandate is to develop aerospace technologies with strong science content, design and build small, medium-sized civil aircraft and support all national aerospace programs. Sudhindra, AIR News, Bengaluru. In West Bengal, moderate to heavy rain is lashing Kolkata and adjoining districts. The regional meteorological office in Kolkata informed that the rainfall occurred due to the movement of cyclonic circulation from northwest Bay of Bengal to Gangetic West Bengal and strong insertion of moisture. Daily commuters had to face water woes due to intense spells of rain which led to water cloggings in parts of the city and surrounding areas. North and South 24 Parganas, Howrah, Hooghly and Purbo Mednipur also reported heavy rainfall since last night. In Russia, the ruling United Russia Party of incumbent President Vladimir Putin has retained a majority in parliament after a three-day election. However, the results show the party lost around one-fifth of its support. According to latest reports, over 33% ballots have been counted so far, with Putin's party winning over 45% of the votes, while its nearest rival, Communist Party, polled around 22% of the votes. While this indicates an emphatic win for the ruling United Russia Party, it would be a weaker performance for the party when compared to the 2016 parliamentary election, when it had won over 54% of the votes. As our nation celebrates the 75th year of independence, a series of events are being organized by the government as part of Azadi Kamrit Mahotsav. To commemorate the occasion of the Jan Utsav, All India Radio News brings its listeners a special quiz on India's freedom movement and its glorious history. The quiz is being conducted every Monday and Tuesday in Morning News since the 16th of August and will continue till the 15th of August 2022. India Post has joined hands as the logistics partner with All India Radio News for the Amrit Mahotsav quiz. Listeners can send their responses to the question over WhatsApp on double eight two six five four six two six two or through email on Amrit Mahotsav quiz at prasarbharati.gov.in. One lucky participant will be selected as a winner and will be awarded an e-certificate and a token prize. Let's now listen to our special program, Azadi Ka Safar. Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav Azadi Ka Safar with AIN News Birth of a Nation 
India's glorious freedom struggle is one of the greatest movements the modern world has ever witnessed. AIR News brings you a glimpse of the struggle every day. In today's episode, we pay tribute to three valiant women freedom fighters who went against the might of British imperialism and laid down their lives for the independence of India. Remembering the 60-year-old Assamese martyr, Bhogeshwari Fukanani, who laid down a life for the love of motherland on this day in 1942. Born in Bharampur area of Assam's Nogao district in 1885, Bhogeshwari was a simple housewife but led massive rebellions in her area and encouraged her six sons and two daughters to participate in the freedom movement. <laughs> After the Barhampur office of the Indian National Congress was seized by the British authorities, the revolutionaries attacked and took back control of the office in September 1942. However, the authorities sent military forces under Captain Finnish to take revenge and crush the revolutionaries. Bhogeshwari along with another freedom fighter Ratan Mala led the revolutionaries and confronted Captain Finnish. When the captain snatched the flag, from Ratan Mala's hand, Bhogeshwari was furious by the disrespect towards the national flag. She snatched the flag from Captain Finnish's hand and hit his head with the pole of the flag. Enraged by her actions, Captain Finnish pulled out his revolver and fired at Bhogeshwari, who fell down to the ground. She succumbed to her injuries and died on September 20, 1942. Bhogeshwari is a living testament to the love for motherland and exemplifies that age is never a barrier when national duty calls. We salute the legend of Bhogeshwari Fukanani. We also remember another Rasamese freedom fighter and one of the youngest martyrs of the Quit India movement, Kanaklata Barua, who was martyred on this day in 1942. at the mere age of 17 years. Kanaklata, also referred to as Birbala, was a member of the band of revolutionaries Mrityu Bahini. Defying the police's orders, she led a group of unarmed villagers to hoist the national flag near a police station in a hometown of Burangabari village in Assam. <laughs> Kanaklata was shot while hoisting the flag but even as she fell to bullets she held the flag high the fast petrol vessel icgs kanaklata barua of the indian coast guard commissioned in 1997 is named after her a life size statue of hers was unveiled at goripur in 2011 may we continue to be inspired by such courageous souls also remembering the Irish social reformer and support of Indian nationalism theosophist Annie Besant who left us on this day in 1933 along with Lokmanya Tilak Besant launched the All India Home Rule League in 1916 which perhaps was the first political movement in India to have regime change as its main goal she was the first woman to be elected as president of the Indian National Congress in 1917 As early as 1902, Besant had written that India is not ruled for the prospering of the people, but rather for the profit of her conquerors and her sons are being treated as a conquered race. She encouraged Indian national consciousness, attacked caste and child marriage and worked for the Indian education. As editor of the New India newspaper, she called for clear and decisive moves towards self-rule until the end of her life. Besant campaigned for India's independence not only in India but also on the tours of Britain we salute her love and zeal for Indian independence That brings us to the end of this episode of Azadi ka safar with AIR news see you in the next episode tomorrow
आजादी के आंदोलन के खजाने में ऐसे ढेरों शब्द जिन्होंने बदल दिए इतिहास तारीख बदलने वाले लफ्जों पर आकाशवाणी समाचार ला रहा है विशेष कार्यक्रम धरोहर हर सोमवार In today's episode of Dharohar we will bring you the voice of Iron Man Sardar Vallabhbhai Patel Youth Affairs and Sports Minister Anurag Thakur will virtually interact with sports ministers of states and union territories across the country today to discuss the further promotions of sports in the country following the major success of Olympics and Paralympics in Tokyo Mr Thakur would know from states and UTs the way forward and how they would contribute in the mission to make India a top sporting nation he will be joined by minister of state for youth affairs and sports Nishit Pramanik Today Kolkata Knight Riders will take on Royal Challengers Bangalore at Sheikh Zayed Stadium in Abu Dhabi at 7:30 p.m. Indian time. Last night the first game of the second leg of Indian Premier League Chennai Super Kings beat Mumbai Indians by 20 runs at Dubai International Stadium. After winning the toss Chennai posted 156 runs for 6 wickets in the stipulated 20 overs riding on Ruturaj Gaekwad's unbeaten 88 of 58 In Bihar devotees have started offering pind daan to their ancestors during the fortnight long Pitri Paksh which began today people across the state come to Gaya to offer pind daan this year Pitri Paksh mela has not been organized due to covid Devotees have been instructed to perform the rituals in complete adherence to COVID guidelines. Health camps have been set up for corona testing and vaccination. Gaya District Magistrate Abhishek Singh said devotees have started coming to the Vishnupad temple since its reopening on the 26th of August. At the stock markets after a poor opening in the morning, the Sensex of the Bombay Stock Exchange paired its losses to trade 99 points or 0.2% lower at 58,916 in the afternoon session a short while ago. The Nifty at the National Stock Exchange lost 52 points or 0.3% to 17,533. Now let us take a look at the weather update for today. National capital Delhi will have generally cloudy sky the city recorded 27 degrees celsius as the minimum temperature while the maximum will be around 35 degrees mumbai will have a generally cloudy sky with moderate rain temperature will hover between 26 and 31 degrees kolkata will have generally cloudy sky with a few spells of rain or thunder showers minimum temperature in the city was 26 degrees maximum will be around 32 Chennai is likely to witness generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers temperature will vary between 26 and 33 degrees and now before we end the bulletin the headlines once again Charanjit Singh Channi sworn in as new chief minister of Punjab prime minister congratulates him and says center will continue to work with the Punjab government for the betterment of the people Foreign Minister of Saudi Arabia Prince Faisal bin Farhan Al Saud to call on Prime Minister Narendra Modi today. National COVID-19 vaccination crosses 81 crore mark. Recovery rate stands at 97.68%. Schools reopen in several states amid COVID protocol. Vladimir Putin's United Russia party retains majority in parliament polls. Union Minister Anurag Thakur to discuss promotion of sports in the country with sports ministers of states and union territories. And in IPL cricket, Kolkata Knight Riders to take on Royal Challengers Bangalore at Abu Dhabi at 7:30 p.m. For details of these stories and more, log on to our website www.newsonair.gov.in and news on AIR app. And with that we end the midday news.